hematopoiesis now this is the first topic which you must know if you start with the uh, main headings of immunology now when we talk about immunology we means we are talking or we are studying about the mechanism which we our body performs whenever there is infection from some diseases or some infecting agent whatever from uh, infectors the against it the body starts preparing a force and that force will then kill the infection now for this we require the soldiers and the soldiers are the cells of the immune system now this cells has to be developed so that whenever there is any, any infection any enemy from uh, comes to our body then our uh, soldiers will fight against it so we require cells now these cells generate a by hematopoiesis now what are these cells these cells are the cells of our body or the blood cells blood cells basically it is of two types red cells and white cells means red blood cells and white blood cells that is wbc now this development of the, the rbcs and wbc starts in the embryonic yolk sac during the first week of development in the development is in the first week then only it star has been started and once the it has gained an age of 3 month then the cells that is the hematopoietic stem cell migrate to the fetal liver and then finally to the spleen so they are uh, these two organs are very important in uh, hematopoiesis one is the fetal liver and second is the spleen now how about all hematopoiesis basically give rise to the cells of the immune system so it is the basic topic of immunology how the, the cells which will fight for uh, preventing us from the infection how these cells are formed so we will study how the process of cell development is carried out no hematopoietic stem cell this is the first cell as i have told you that this is the first cell which will start its development from the first week of gestation now what happened now this hematopoietic stem cell it is totipotent totipotent means it is self renewal it will give rise or it can give rise to varieties of cells now basically hematopoietic stem cell we state it as two varieties or it give rise to two main cells they are lymphoid progenitor and another is myeloid progenitor now when we talk about blood cells we know there is rbc and wbc RBC generation comes under myeloid progenitor and another variety is the lymphoid progenitor we will talk about another different varieties of cells now this lymphoid progenitor will give rise first to T cell progenitor there are different varieties of cell which will form from the progen lymphoid progenitor we'll talk one by one now t cell progenitor progenitor the word means that it is a initial stage which will differentiate to a specific one so now here it is t cell progenitor means it will give rise to t cell but at present it is a uh, cell which is not a complete t cell so from this cell it will give rise to t cell clear now t cell progenitor give rise to two variety of cells first is t c cell that is cytotoxic t cell and t h cell that is helper t cell one is cytotoxic another is 
helper T cell. Now these two cells have different function. Next variety of cell which lymphoid progenitor give rise to is B cell progenitor. Again from B cell progenitor we will get B cell. Now this B cells are responsible for secretion of antibodies which we will see in other consequence videos. Now first for, from, for here you will remember that in B cells there is secretion of antibodies. Next cell which is generated from lymphoid progenitor, this dendritic cell, another is natural killer cell. So basically there are four types, one is T cell, B cell, dendritic cell and natural killer cell. And T cells has two varieties, TC and TH. So this is about lymphoid progenitor. Next we come across the myeloid progenitor. Myeloid progenitor, first is erythrocyte progenitor and will give rise to erythrocyte and second is megakaryocyte which will give rise to platelets. Now these two are for the RBCs. Erythrocyte and platelets, these are important for, not for the immunological purpose but for maintaining the blood in a steady or healthy condition, these two are required which is also synthesized from the myeloid project. Now, exactly the immune system cell starts from here, that is dendritic cell. Granulocyte, monocyte, progenitor, it will give rise to monocyte and neutrophils, where monocyte will further mature to form macrophages. So, monocyte, neutrophils and macrophage. Next is eosinophil progenitor which will give rise to eosinophil. Another is basophil progenitor which will give rise to basophil. Now once you look at this diagram you will get an imagination of the cells which is present in our body and help us to fight against the immune, uh, against the diseases. Now this dev gives the boost of the defense mechanisms. Now the cells are T cells, B cells, dendritic cells and NK cells in the lymphoid progenitor and in myeloid progenitor it is erythrocytes, platelets, dendritic cells, macrophage, monocytes, neutrophils, isinophil and basophil. Now once you get all these names, it is really uh, very tough to remember all this name when you are new to this uh, subject. So I have created a short form. This short form says not bad. It is an easy word to remember. Now from this not bad, remember four letters. N, T, B and D. All the four corner letters N, T, B, D. Now these are the cells. N for natural killer, T for T cell, B for B cell and D for dendritic cell. Hope this will help you. To remember the names of the cells. So there are four varieties of cells in the lymphoid progenitor. Now in myeloid progenitor I have made this. One is pen, ben and madam. Pen, ben and madam. If you remember this. Now from the first word pen. Only we need two letters P and E. One is P is for platelets. E is for erythrocytes. Platelets and erythrocyte. Now in the next word come B, E, N. Now here we required all the three letters B for basophil, eosinophil and neutrophil. Basophil, eosinophil and neutrophil. Next is madam. So we have five letters but only three letters are useful M, D and M. Both the A are not required to us. So M is for monocyte. D is for dendritic cells and last M is for macrophages. So there are N, T, B, D, 4 in lympho lymphoid progenitor, in pen, P, E, 2, ben it is 3 and madam it is 3. So overall there are 12 varieties of cells in the immune system. Hope this short forms help you to remember the types of cells. 
Now, when we have talked about the types of cells formed, when we look forward to a uh, step ahead to the hematopoiesis, the natural process, here comes some transcription factors. Now, when we are talking about cells and the cells has been synthesized there as genetic makeup in it. So, this factors help in the synthesizing or enhance the properties for a specific varieties of cell. Now, GATA1 is one factor which is required for erythrocyte cells. Now, erythrocyte cells means for erythrocytes and platelets. But GATA2 is for all the varieties of hematopoietic cells. That is erythrocyte lineage, myeloid lineage and lymphoid lineage. I have told you there is two basic lineage, lymphoid and myeloid. But in some uh, varieties you can also find that in erythro erythrocytes and platelets have been given a separate class of erythroid lineage. PU1 is only for erythroid maturation stages and myeloid in the later stages and lymphoid. PM1 is for myeloid and lymphoid and e ECROS1 ACROS is for lymphoid, OC2 is for B lymphocyte. This is our patent um, old um, capitals. Now, recently one has been added that is NOT, which is for T cell development, that is T lymphocyte development. So, these are the seven factors which is required for the development of specific varieties of lympho hematopoietic cell lineages. Hope this will help you to remember the types of cells which has been formed and which factors are required for which type of development. Now these are some of the factors specifically asked in the MCQs for the competitive exams.